Hello, this is a short video about appraisal and maternity leave for GPs. I'm Paula Wright. We take breaks for a variety of reasons. It might be maternity, sickness, sabbaticals, research, travelling. And because our identity is closely tied in with our role and profession, taking a break is often not just a break, but it means coming back a different person. In this year of the COVID pandemic, it also means coming back to a different world. A common question is, do I need to have an appraisal if I'm taking a break, a maternity break? And if so, when should I have it? So the key thing is to discuss this in advance with your RO and their team and decide whether you're going to have a missed, approved missed appraisal or whether you might have an early or late appraisal. There is no requirement to have an appraisal during a maternity leave break, but you must demonstrate engagement, which means reaching out and having that discussion. If you have an approved missed appraisal, it's recommended that your next appraisal is early at the time of your return. If you happen to be missing supporting information, such as the patient survey or MSF, the RO can defer your revalidation recommendation. Deferral is a neutral act to enable you to maintain your license to practice during the deferral period. In this option, the maternity leave is scheduled to occur between two appraisals and that leaves a small amount of time prior to and just after the maternity break where the doctor will be in normal practice and carrying out some CPD. In this scenario, the appraisal is not possible due to the timing of the maternity break and therefore the options are to have an approved missed appraisal to have it prior to the maternity break or soon on return to work. In this situation the time spent at work with opportunities for CPD will obviously be reduced and the interval between appraisals is likely to be less than 12 months at some point. A question commonly asked is how much CPD should you do in a year when you've taken a break? So on the one hand, you need to make sure that when you return, you're up to date, competent and safe to return. On the other hand, in RCGP Mythbusters, it talks about CPD proportionate to your time in work. Remember that there's no GMC requirement to reach 50 CPD credits or hours, and we're definitely seeing a move away from counting CPD credits or hours as part of the appraisal process. So what does that mean in practice in terms of your CPD, how much you do and how you do it? Well, try to have a plan and use your appraisal to help you plan. Remember that you accrue your normal CPD entitlement whilst on maternity leave in any salaried post. Also remember that there are the 10 kit days, keeping in touch days, or if you're taking shared parental leave, the split days. And you can use these to come into work and do some refresher activities or do CPD. You may find it helpful to keep an eye on some emails from various organisations so that you know what's going on. There's lots of fantastic e-learning in the form of modules or free content from uh, BMJ and RCGP. There are also excellent webinars uh, run by NHS England, for example, and useful podcasts. And crucially, learning from cases is a fantastic way to keep in touch and to stay on top of things. So you're even discussing cases with colleagues uh, in informal learning groups or social media groups is a great way to carry out some vicarious learning. Finally, remember to check in with your employer to see if any mandatory training is due. This is not an appraisal requirement. Let's look next at how appraisal can help you to return successfully and help to address confidence. An appraisal as you're returning to work help, can help provide hope and empowerment. So hope in terms of career choices and discussing the options, but also in terms of rethinking your current role within the same practice. It can also empower you to request an induction to changes in practice systems and referral pathways to request supervision and support on your return and to request a phased return with catch-up slots and your accrued CPD entitlement. 
It's recommended that if you've been out of practice for more than three months, you return with a return to practice action plan. And this would include CPD that you may have done whilst away or on your return, additional support, supervision and mentoring, additional time in your schedule to, to in order to be able to seek advice and supervision, returning in an observer or supernumerary capacity, a phased return with a graded increase in workload, flexible hours and arrangements, and extremely important is to be given induction information about organisational changes. You can come across useful resources anywhere, whether you're at home, on the go, at different workplaces. And having a central cloud folder for resources is a fantastic way to keep track of all this information that you come across, because you can add to it wherever you are and access it wherever you are. When you're on a career break, you often re-evaluate your priorities and values. It may be that whilst you've been off, You've decided that the most important thing are boundaries, autonomy and work-life balance. Or it might be support and feeling a sense of belonging and connecting. It might be income and financial security. Or it might be the need to have opportunities for progression, leadership and mastery of specific skills. It might be that what you're after is variety or patient continuity and colleague continuity. The appraisal can help you explore the professional options that might best fit with these priorities and may also help you explore the impact that these choices may have on your skill set. There are many roles open to general practitioners at the moment, from traditional partnership to salaried roles, zero hours roles and self-employed roles. Returning to work as a locum mid-pandemic has added challenges. Generally, you've got no fixed base to return to. You might be quite isolated and out of the loop. Generally, you might not expect an induction or uh, and have difficulty accessing training for new IT systems and devices, um, but you're expected to hit the ground running. You also need to think about whether your terms and conditions of engagement are COVID safe um, and also whether uh, you've complied with a risk assessment for your own situation. And finally, you need to be sorting out your bookings ahead of your actual return to work date. It's worth finding out from your local HEE team or NHS England office if there are any return to practice schemes which are funded, for example, through the local retention fund. The ideal return for a locum is a situation where there's an induction at a practice and then a phased but funded return with a graded increase in workload and supervision and support from a colleague on site who's also funded for this important work. A deep brief at the end of each session is also key. Where this funding is lacking, you may need to find another pragmatic and mutually beneficial arrangement. Approach a practice you already know and propose a reduced workload for a reduced fee and try to put in place an ad hoc support either from within or outside the practice. It's important to explain your support needs as not all practices will have the capacity to provide this. The other pragmatic option is where a locum offered to work in a practice in an entirely pro bono situation in exchange for some on-site supervision and support and a debrief. Both parties are contributing, the practice gains some capacity and the returning GP is getting the support they need to get back on their feet. If you've been out of practice for more than two years, you'll need to return via the Induction and Refresher Scheme, which has its own website. It involves some assessments on entry to the scheme and on exit and a period of supervised practice. The Retain GP scheme exists to try and keep GPs in the workforce. This graph shows the two ages at which loss to the workforce happens for female GPs and male GPs. And it also shows the eligibility criteria for being accepted onto the Retain GP scheme. The Retain GP scheme provides funding for the employing practice, £4,000 per employed session per year, and also funding for the retained GP in the form of a bursary. There are requirements in terms of the number of sessions that can be worked, the need for a suitable job plan, supervision, mentoring and CPD as per the model contract. If you're worried about the number of sessions you've done, have a look at this guidance supporting doctors who undertake a low volume of NHS general practice clinical work. 
It includes a structured reflective template which can be submitted to help you demonstrate how you're mitigating against the risk of low volume work. It's re recommended that doctors complete this if they've done less than 40 sessions in a year at work.